Will you sign my arm? Just yeah. autograph it. I'll just tattoo it in later. Yeah. So. Yeah, totally normal. All you have to do is take a chance. I don't take chances. What first attracted both of you to the project? Oh, the script was fantastic. And Aline McKenna wrote it. She wrote Devil Wars Prada, 27 Dresses, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. So she's just a naturally, hysterically funny person and a director I'd always wanted to work with. So when this came up, I was really excited. Yeah, for me, I always wanted to make a romantic comedy with Reese, like always. And I'd work with Aline. Uh, every time I had a romantic comedy I was doing, and felt like there was a scene that was a little funky or something wasn't quite right, I would reach out to Aline as a friend and just say, hey, what do you think about this? Like, is there, is there something I'm missing relative to this that, that could improve it? And she was always just amazing. Like, and, and, and her notes are always spot on. She was always so thoughtful. And so that combination was incredible. But I, I think the big thing is, is coming out of the pandemic and coming out of COVID, when I read the script, like, this is the movie I wanted to see. Like, it was happy, and it was fun, and it was hopeful, and it was all those things that I really desperately had been searching for to find on my little menu of menus, and there it was in this screenplay, and so that's what made me excited about it. When's the last time that we hung out that long? I don't know, 2008? When you left LA because you were scared of earthquakes? Okay, hey. The Chino Hills Tembler was no joke. <laughs> Reese has a very vivid memory of the first time that we met. Do you remember when we met? I don't remember the cooler thing okay. at all. I met him at a party and, and he was carrying a little cooler, not a big cooler, a cooler around a party. And I was like, hey, what's in the cooler? <laughs> cooler guy. I, I, and it was Red Bull. He had a lot of Red Bull in a cooler and I thought that was Quirky. And it wasn't my cooler. Um, I was carrying a you cooler. You like this story. It was, a, it was I know, I, I, I was carrying a cooler You're totally for someone it else. No. And I was probably so nervous at the fact that this human that I admire so much was you were not it, even acknowledging me that I was like, it probably didn't even explain the reason why I had the cooler. Or I was just like, oh, what's in Red Bull's inside? Reese Witherspoon? I just was like fascinated with what he was doing. Yeah, because I was probably so nervous that it seemed like I was being coy about the Red Bull, yeah. but I was just probably just nervous. I mean, I remember seeing you in Punked, and I thought it was really funny. And then I saw, I loved Butterfly Effect. I love No Strings Attached with Natalie. Those were some of my favorites. Yeah, for me. Did you do a movie where you were like in a military uniform? Yeah, The Guardian. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. With, yeah, with old Kevin Costner. There you oh, go. So handsome. He's both. Uh, I mean, what handsome about? and handsome, and in uniforms. Uh, uh, I remember seeing Legally Blonde the first time. Oh no, actually, I think the first thing I saw you in was Election. Oh yeah. And I was like, whoa! Like this, that I thought that that film was extraordinary. I thought you were extraordinary in it. A lot of people thought I was that character, so I didn't get jobs for a whole year. Afterwards. Oh, really? Because people thought I was like her. Oh, wow. I had to like go on a whole campaign across Hollywood to like go to casting directors and studio heads and to be, be like, like, no, no, I promise no, you, that I'm, I was I'm like not, playing a character. Not, yeah. <laughs> I promise you. Um, I mean, that just means you did a really good job, right? You pulled it off. Well, unfortunately, I guess people thought I was sort of like her. No, what are you talking about? That. That, you were unbelievable in that. That film was phenomenal. So I remember seeing that, and then I remember seeing Legally Blonde and the juxtaposition of those characters. And then S Sweet Home Alabama. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I've um, seen all my movies. And then Walk the Line yeah. that was, like, staggering performance. I mean, I, I'm, a big, I'm a big fan. What have you both learned about what the audience wants to see from a rom-com? Well, first of all, just being a fan growing up as a young girl watching Meg Ryan and Julia Roberts and like studying their work to see what was it about these characters that was so appealing and what was the formula that really worked and made a great rom-com. And, you know, over the years, I feel like it's been hard. Audiences are a little more cynical about them. And I think the great thing about this one is it's so grounded in reality. Our characters are so flawed in who they are because that's really our only obstacle is ourselves. We can't get together because we are so narrow-minded about each other. And we don't see the bigger perspective that we have so much more in common than we, we really think we do.